this is a jig for uh, drilling out for those nut plates. So you've got a center post here on this side that goes in the hole for the screw. And then there's a drill bushing guide right here on this side. And when you turn it over, you've got another pin on this side that goes in the first hole you drilled. So you drill a hole, you put the center pin in the hole for the screw, and then you can drill out the hole for one rivet, and then flip this tool over and put this pin here in that hole, and then drill the second hole. And that is sized for different size uh, nut plates. This one happens to be for a number six. And this is a standard width. There are nut plates that aren't that standard width. See, this one is this one is the standard width, even though it looks like it's not because it's got these small ears on it. But it's the same uh, distance between all these holes, so that works for that one. But of course it doesn't work for this one, which is the one-legged one, or single-legged one. Actually, you could actually do one hole with that, but you can't do the second hole with it. Now they do make jigs like that for those. And that's like this one here. So this one is an either-or. It's either for a two-legged one, like the ones the other one was, or for the, for the single-legged one, like this one is. And it works the same way. Uh, you put the pin here in the screw hole, and then you drill the first hole through the bushing, and you turn it over and line up this pin and this pin in the holes that are there, and then this one will drill, you can use that bushing to drill the second hole, or you can use this uh, bushing here. To drill another hole for a, a two-legged ear, a butterfly ear, whatever you want to call it. Well, here's another eight single-legged one, single-legged one, but you can see it won't work. Uh, the hole pattern on that's different. I do have this one for a number four. Yeah, that one works for a number four. No, nut plate. I got these off of eBay. Anyway, that makes it a lot faster to uh, drill those holes out. And I'm not going to drill this one out here in the center because that's where the ground lug uh, hooks up for the landing lights. Anyway, they hook into the underneath the lug here on the back. And if I put a nut plate on there, I won't be able to screw that down to the lug. So I'll put the nut plate on the piece that goes in from the front or on that one so those are all done and I don't need them on the edges of this one because the screws go in from this way into the panels on the side here on this one the landing light assembly is all powder coated now I took and put screws in all of the holes and powder coated those so they would be black too and wouldn't have any bright and shiny screws sticking out and then just for good measure because I don't think I could get screws in all of them the places that I need I just uh, made up a little pallet right here of some sheet metal aluminum I drilled holes in and I put screws in here I've got a bunch of number sixes and a few number fours well, I can start putting that together. And I, you know, checking it, I should have done that before, but I didn't. But checking this piece goes up against one of the ribs, like this, only the fixed rib. And when I got to checking it, I noticed that one of the nut plates that I put on there interfered with the rib. Actually, it was this one, and the, this center center nut plate interfered with the rib. The other ones are okay on this one. They may go outside of it, but that one interfered with it, so I'm going to have to put a regular screw with a nut on that one. 
actually I could put another nut plate right here on this hole because this had four holes in it uh, instead of three so I could do that but this one here the top one up here uh, interfered with the rib when this one goes up against the rib on the other side so I had to take that nut plate out and uh, this bulkhead here bolts up to those the, this bolts up to the rib this bolts up to there and then all the other pieces bolt up in sequence there so I can start putting this all together now I've already put this uh, inside bulkhead into this rib, into this nose rib, because it's a heck of a lot easier putting these nuts on here, tightening them up with it out, than it is with it in here on that. So anyway, I've got that on there, so I put this nose rib on there now. We've got these new uh, B or K, P, whatever they are, screws. They're blunt head sheet metal screws. These are new, but they're phosphated, so they're kind of corrosion resistant. At least more so than uh, steel ones. And you don't really want to put stainless steel in here into this spar. cutout was for a grommet for that wire to come through there, but it's not. That's the cutout for that clearance for that bolt, for that strut fitting. Now i got that in there. The next thing to do is to put this other bulkhead in this other rib. number six screws and I'm using Torx head screws on here. These are new uh, screws and stainless steel. I uh, powder coated those and I'm using fiber lock nuts on here. Get all the screws in before I get it tightened up. Okay, now I got those in there, I can tighten them up. These were a pain to get out of here with the Phillips head screwdriver, the Phillips head screws, because the screwdriver doesn't fit in here very well. And of course, all those screws were a little bit rusty and tight. So it was a pain getting those out of there. That's why I like the Torx a lot better. Now that's in there, I can put this other bulkhead in. And I got make sure I got it right because I got this curved side. That's got to go with the curve, the top curve. 
of the wing here. Black in there. There we go. Now I gotta make sure that I get this set up right here. And we got this brackets right here, and they go with these three down I guess. Yeah, they go with those down. The poles to adjust the angle of the light bulb itself. These get mounted into them, so I gotta mount these up first. Into there. Because I can't get the screwdriver in there once I get those in. Now those get on the screws and nuts. All right, I got this assembly made up. I had to think about that a little bit. I started to put this bracket back here on to the holder, the light holder. And then I got to thinking uh, it's got to go on the center holder too. And you can't really get a screw in, in there from this way and get a screwdriver in. And actually, you can't it's hard to get the screwdriver in from this side if this bulkhead's on. It's bad enough without that bulkhead on, but anyway, I, I put this one on, or started to put this one on first, then I had to take it off so I could put this piece onto this uh, center holder. Well, that's a U-shaped or bent so that it holds both of them. Now the other thing is these things have holes in them to adjust the angle of the bulb, the light bulb, where it's shining down or shining uh, straight out. Well, normally with a plane being a tail dragger, when you're taxiing, you're going to want the light, taxi light shining down a pretty good angle to see the ground, and then um, the landing light may be shining more straight out. But I don't, flying on floats, I don't really use uh, the lights, don't fly at night, so we don't need that. So I mainly use them for recognition lights. So. I went ahead and put one of them straight out and the other one down at the at the first hole, which puts it down just a little bit, just in case. So now this thing goes in here like this, and then there's a divider plate, diverter plate, whatever that goes in here. And you got to make sure you get that in the right way so that this nose rib angle is, follows the angle of the nose. So that'll go in now. Uh, but before I put these in, there needs to be a protector, some rubber or something around these holes in here or where the back of the bulbs go in. So I think I've got something someplace. I'm going to go have to go pull out my extra stuff and see if I can't find what I did with that. And I'm chafing stuff there. But anyway, that's, that's coming together. I had this stuff here that I actually took out of this. Uh, I put it in when I put light bulbs in it here a couple of years ago and I had one piece in one of these holes already and then I had a bigger piece that went in one of the other holes to cushion the bulb. So I just uh, put the one back in there and then I cut this piece to fit in there. I've got some more of this someplace I'll dig out when I get ready to put the bulbs in and stuff finish up. But for now that's good enough. Oh yeah, it's gonna be okay. All right, I'm gonna make sure I got it the right way. Yeah, all right. All these screws here were just placeholders so I can take them out. All right, let's put one over on this side.
Okay, those screws were started. Now this piece goes in here next, and I've got a, a nut plate here on this side because I want to be able to put my grounding uh, clamps back in here. And it's probably not going to make that much difference now to think about it because this thing is insulated from all of the rest of it anyway. It's painted even though the nut plate is metal against metal. All of the rest of this is painted. So Oh, and this is the one that's going to be kind of tough to get the screwdriver in there because it sticks out. Okay, I got it right in the right direction. Flashlight again. Okay, landing light assembly is in. The only thing I've got left to do on that to put in there are the parts that actually hold the bulbs in. The bulbs go in here and then there's a piece that goes over the top and screws into these to hold the bulbs in. That's the only thing i got left to do. i got one to screw to put in here that I figured out for my ground lug but I'm pretty sure now that that's not going to work. Well, anyway, I've got a couple of holes in the spar right here that are pre-drilled in the spar for something that's not on here. And I think I'll clean up around one of those holes down to bare metal and use that for a ground lug. I'll bring that ground lug out, hook it up to the back of the landing light here where this other screw goes in consider that a ground lug. Well that looks a lot nicer than it did. Oh god, so much nicer. Well the landing light bulbs go in like this against that piece and then this piece goes over the top of them to hold it in. And I need to get a cushion to go around this piece here. Now on some landing lights, on the Cessna landing lights, there's a little tab right here on the glass and those had a little notch in them so you've got them lined up the right direction, but these don't have a notch on them so they don't apparently make any difference which way they go. Okay, that is good. A good night's work. Geez, it's a quarter after one. I guess I better go to bed. It's a.m. Well, I got this landing light assembly put all together last night. Uh, the nose rib put back in here and these bulkheads put in the ribs both sides. The main bulkhead back here. All this stuff was assembled. I got it all together last night. One of the things I didn't do last night was put in the ground wires. Well I put those in today. Now I kind of worried about the ground having a positive ground on here because everything is painted, powder coated and painted and everything, all the joints and whatnot. Uh, I put the nut plate into this divider plate right here instead of into this so that I could put the screw in from the back and it would be going into unpainted material. So the screw goes into a nut plate right here and the nut plate is riveted onto this plate which is unpainted which you would think would ordinarily give it a ground but well I guess it is screwed in to, through nut plates that are also on unpainted material into this thing but everything is painted everything is is got paint on it so a ground a good positive ground is not necessarily assured well, I just put the ground cables in for the landing lights and one for the uh, inside and one for the outside and then I've got a braided ground wire here that I attach to that same screw that I put into the landing light assembly and then I went over here there was an existing hole in this spar and I took a little bit of paint thinner and cleaned off all of the paint and everything off from that around that hole so it's nice bright metal right there 
uh, that was all cleaned up and brightened with Alumabrite. It's not going to get any cleaner than that, scrubbed down. So anyway, I put a screw in there, uh, a bolt in there, and that uh, ground wire goes to that. So that should have a good positive ground for the landing light. The other thing I've done, I almost forgot about it, is I put a black box in here. <laughs> Everything in an airplane is a black box except for the mythical black box and those are usually red or orange. Well, anyway, there's a little black box that I attached in here that makes the landing light pulse on and off. And since I primarily use the landing lights for anti-collision or recognition lights, something like that, uh, I don't really use it for landing. The pulsing draws a lot more attention to people from a distance than a steady light. If the light's flashing or pulsing, it's going to draw a lot more attention. So I put this adapter in there. And I still got to wire it in. It's going to be attached to the power line and to the ground line and hooked into the landing light itself. So that's got to be put in there. And what this does is if you turn the landing light on, the landing light comes on. If you turn it on, then turn it off, and then turn it on again, then the light pulses. Well, anyway, like I said, I still got to wire that, but that's in there. And I just put that in with a couple little screws, some of the ones that I'd painted black so they don't show in through the front. And I've still got to find some kind of a cushion to go in here uh, on the plates that hold the landing lights in. I thought I had one in a box over here on the floor that I've got a whole bunch of uh, airplane parts in but I just dug those two two boxes out and it's not in there so it's obviously if I have I still have it it's someplace else I'm gonna have to tape this up and everything so we keep overspray off of it and whatnot because once the leading edge goes on there all this stuff is exposed and I don't want to put the lens on there or anything until we're all done anyway it's pretty now <laughs>